Hi friends, uh, welcome to all. Uh, in this video, we are going to uh, see the packet tracer activity configuring OSPF advanced features. Here is our objectives of this packet tracer activity. In part 1, modify OSPF default settings. In part 2, verify connectivity. Also, we will go through the scenario. In this activity, OSPF is already configured and all entity devices currently have full connectivity. We will modify the default OSPF routing configurations by changing the hello and dead timers and adjusting the bandwidth of a link. Then we will verify that a full connectivity is restored for all entity devices. Coming to part 1, modify OSPF default settings. Step 1, test connectivity between all entity devices. Before modifying the OSPF settings, verif verify that all PCs can ping the web server and each other. Right. So we will uh, test the connectivity between all uh, these entity devices. Coming to the topology, here we can see our entity devices PC1, PC2 and PC3. So all these entity devices uh, will be able to ping to this web server. So we will get the IP address of this web server. Yes, here it is. We will copy this address. Now we will come to PC1 and we will ping to this web server. Ping to the address of web server. Yes, we are getting the replay. Now we will test from PC2 to this web server. Ping to our web server. Yes, we are getting the replay. Now we will go to PC3. Yes, we are getting the replay. Now we will uh, ping from uh, these PCs, uh, we will ping from PC1 to PC2, we will get the IP address of PC2. We will copy the address. Coming to PC1 and we will ping to PC2. Here is the IP address of PC2. Yes, we are getting the replay. Now we will ping from PC3 to PC2. Ping to PC2. Yes, we are getting the replay. Yes, we verified that all PCs can ping the web server and each other. Now we will come to uh, step 2. Adjust the hello and dead timers between R1 and R2. Enter the following commands on R1. Uh, we have to go to the interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and IP OSPF hello interval 15 and IP OSPF dead interval 60. Yes, here we are adjusting the hello and the timers. Coming to the configuration on R1. Enable configure terminal. We have to go to the interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. Uh, first, we will change uh, the hello interval time. IP OSPF hello interval. And here we have to specify the seconds. So, as specified, it's 15. Now, we are going to change the dead interval. IP OSPF dead interval and we have to specify the seconds uh, 60 coming to b after a short period of time the ospf connection with the r2 will fail both sides of the connection need to have the same timers in order for the adjacency to be maintained adjust the timers on r2 here we can see we received a message process 1 neighbor 209.165.200.225 on serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 from full to down neighbor down dead timer expired 
Also, we can see interface down or detached. Here, the OSPF connection with the R2 is failed. Yes, so both sides of the connection need to have the same timers in order for the adjacency. Yes, now we have to adjust the hello and dead timers uh, on this interface, so serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 uh, in the device uh, uh, R2. Coming to the configuration on R2. Here we can see that same message what we have seen on the router R1. Interface down or detached. Right. Enable configure terminal and we have to go to the interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 which is connecting to uh, R1. Now we will give IP or SPF. First we will set the hello interval as 15. And now we will set IP OSPF dead interval as 60. Right. Yes, here we can see the message process 1 neighbor 192.168.10.5 on serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 from loading to full. Loading done. Now we will come to step 3. Adjust the bandwidth setting on R1. Trace the path between PC1 and the web server located at 64.100.1.2. Notice that the path from PC1 to the server uh, that is 64.100.1.2 is routed through R2. OSPF prefers the lower cost path. Now we are going to give a tracer command from uh, the entity device PC1 to this web server uh, so that uh, we can identify the path from PC1 to this web server, uh, whether it's for through R1, R2 web server or R1, R3, R2 web server. Right, we will uh, cross check that. Coming to PC1 command prompt. Here we are going to give the command tracer and the IP address of our web server. Yes, trace completed. From this uh, trace set output, uh, we can see that uh, the path from PC1 to the web server is through R1, R2 uh, and to the web server. Same thing we can observe with the help of uh, uh, this uh, simple PDU uh, in the uh, simulation mode. Here we can see that I am going to send from PC1 to web server. Here we are going to give a capture or forward. It goes to R1, then it goes to R2, then it goes to the internet and to the web server. Yes, here we can see the path. Coming to B on the R1 serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 interface, set the bandwidth to 64 kb per second. This does not change the actual port speed, only the metric that the OSP of process on R1 will use to calculate best routes so we are going to give this command bandwidth 64 uh, on this interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 uh, on the device r1 before configuring the bandwidth uh, we will uh, check the uh, existing bandwidth on these interfaces uh, coming to r1 enable we will check the bandwidth of uh, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 so interfaces uh, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and here we can see the bandwidth uh, 1544 uh, kilobit also we will uh, check the bandwidth of uh, this interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 and here we can see that bandwidth 1544 kilobit once we adjust the bandwidth on the R1 serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 interface, we can see the path from PC1 to web server will be through R1, R3, R2 to this web server. Because we know that OSPF prefers always the lower cost path. Coming to R1.
we will go to the interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 configure terminal interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we are going to change the bandwidth 64 now we will uh, check the uh, changed bandwidth on the interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 show interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 here we can see now the bandwidth is a 64 kilobit coming to C trace the path between PC 1 and the web server located at 64.100.1.2 yes again we are going to trace it from PC 1 to uh, our web server notice that the path from PC 1 to this web server is redirected through R3 OSPF prefers the lower cost path right we will check that we are going to give a tracer command again from PC1 to this web server so that we can identify the path from this uh, PC1 to web server. Coming to PC1. Yes, here is our tracer command. Yes, here we can see the previous tracer trace command uh, result and the current uh, tracer uh, com uh, command result. Here we can see it goes to uh, R1, it goes to uh, R3, then we can see it goes to R2, then to the internet and to our web server. Now we will see that with the help of uh, simulation mode. So here uh, we are going to send a simple PDU from PC1 to our web server. I'm going to give your capture forward. It goes to R1, then we can see it will go to R3 yes then it goes to r2 then it to the internet and finally to our web server coming to the last part verify connectivity again uh, verify all pcs can ping the web server and each other first of all we will ping from pc1 to web server Yes, so we are getting the replay. Now we will ping from PC2 to web server. Yes, we are getting the replay. And from PC3 to web server. Yes, we are getting the replay. Now we will ping from PC1 to PC2. Right. Yes, we are getting the replay. Also, we will ping from PC3 to PC2. Yes, we are getting the replay. Yes, here we can see all PCs can ping the web server and each other. Well, uh, in this packet tracer we have seen configuring OSPF advanced features. Here we can see the completion status 25 out of 25. Dear friends, if you have any doubt regarding this packet tracer activity, please comment below. Also, if you like my video, give a thumb and don't forget to subscribe the channel so that you will get latest uploading video info into our gmail thank you